In this video, I'm going to talk about brainstem anatomy. This time I'll be looking at the brainstem from the posterior aspect. This is a, means the same thing as the dorsal aspect. So if I have a brain uh, like this, and I put the cerebellum on the back and the brainstem here, I'll be looking at the brain from where this eye is here, from this direction. Except I'll be cutting off the cerebellum and leaving that on the dissecting room floor. So I'll begin by drawing the brain stem. So, so let's divide the brainstem up into its parts and put in the fourth ventricle. So remember the fourth ventricle can only be seen here because the cerebellum has been removed. It normally sits between the cerebellum and the pons. So here we have the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. And below that we have the spinal cord. Above this line is the brain and the other structures in the middle of the brain. But I've only included one structure here. This is a pineal gland, and it actually comes from the diencephalon. It's not part of the brainstem. If you don't know what that means, it's not important. But the pineal gland is involved in releasing melatonin and regulating circadian rhythms. Now over here we have the cerebral peduncles. Peduncle means little foot in Latin, and they're the little feet of the brain. And they're huge white matter tracks up to the cerebrum, which is the brain. And so here we have four bumps on the back of the brain stem. They are known as the superior and inferior colliculi. Collectively, they're known as the corpora quadrigemina, which is Latin for the four twin bodies. And colliculus is Latin for, uh, small, for a small cabbage. So here are the three cerebellar peduncles. Don't confuse those with the cerebral peduncles. And they're pretty descriptively named. They're called the superior, middle, and inferior cerebellar peduncles. In this image, they've been cut through to remove the cerebellum. And remember that Peduncle means little foot, and so these are the little feet of the cerebellum. They're massive white fiber tracks that, uh, through, that run through to the cerebellum. Now right down here at the bottom of the fourth ventricle, we have the obex. Obex is Latin for barrier, and it's the bo most bottom part of the fourth ventricle. And it also marks the bottom of the medulla and the top of the spinal cord. Now, in a cross-section of the spinal cord, you can see white matter and grey matter. I'll just draw that in now. This is a cross-section. And right in the middle of the grey matter, there's this little hole. It's about a pinhead size. And it's called the central canal, and it runs the whole length of the spinal cord. It's continuous with the ventricles, so it's filled with CSF. And all the CF CSF would actually, it would run down here. The aqueduct of Silvius brings the CSF into the fourth ventricle, but it's deep within the midbrain, so it can't be seen here. Now, shown here, we have two long ridges with a bump at the top of each one. These bumps are called tubicles. This one is a gracile tubercle, and tubercle is Latin for a little hump. And descending inferiorly, there is this ridge called the gracile fasciculus.
Gracile is Latin for slender. And fasciculus is Latin for a little bundle. So it's a slender little bundle of white matter. So over here we have the cuneate tubercle, and coming down from that we have the cuneate fasciculus. The cuneate is Latin for wedge-shaped, and these uh, two fasciculi and, and as a dorsal column, and they carry the fibres um, for fine t with fine touch signals and proprioception. And proprioception means joint position. And that's the anatomy of the dorsal and posterior brainstem.